Welcome back to another episode of the Canadian Watch Monkey, and today we've got an unboxing. Now, this particular watch came out of the U.S. from a, a gentleman, uh, Riley Tripp. I've done a few deals and trades with him, and nothing has ever gone wrong. He, he ships very quickly, and if you're looking for a good uh, used watch, I would highly recommend uh, Mr. Riley Tripp uh, uh, as a good source for picking up watches. He seems to go through quite a few, so big thumbs up, uh, Riley. Thank you very much. Anyway, here we've got the box. Now, what I was looking for was a Black Bay 36, but with a date. And of course, that doesn't exist. So the hunt began and I discovered a line called the Glamour. And uh, just kind of a, a weird name, a little bit feminine sounding, I guess. But uh, nonetheless, there was one particular model that really caught my eye. And it was the all stainless steel one on bracelet. And it had the date at the three o'clock. Uh, so I thought, you know what? This is probably going to be a very decent alternative to the Black Bay 36. And uh, also a possible substitute for one of my all-time favorite watches, which is a Rolex Datejust with the Oyster Bracelet Silver Dial in 36 millimeter smooth bezel. So... That's the look that I was going for. And I will, if you look in the beginning of the video, I will have put some pictures of uh, comparables to this watch. But anyway, before I bore you guys to death, let's get this thing opened up and see what we got inside here. So um, I did have to pay $100 uh, duty on it. So that wasn't too bad. Uh, the purchase price of the watch was a little over a thousand US, which is in my eyes, a great deal. If you go to the Tudor website, You'll see that they were going for over 3,000 US when new. So quite a big uh, hit for depreciation. So sorry about all the noise. Anyway, um, let's get this opened up. You know what? It's, I'm going to go from the back here. Hang on. Okay, so we'll go through the back here. And uh, this came without box, but it came with the paper. So it's got the card and the registration and so on. Uh, this watch, I believe he said was purchased in 2021. So it's not an old watch. It's not brand new, but for the uh, $3,100 that I paid, plus the duty and that uh, wasn't bad. Um, I'd say it was a pretty good deal. But uh, okay, let's get this out. Ah, okay, so looks like it's come in its original what these refer to these cases as coffins oh there's the watch there um here's the card let me just get this out of the way for you guys and uh let's uh, open this actually let's take a look at the card first before we open it up okay so here's the card uh, there's the model number there so if you're interested in the model number that's it there that's the serial number i'm not scared of showing that stuff uh, it's not super high-end watch anyways. It's, you know, uh, a little bit better than mid-tier, I would say, or, or solid mid-tier anyways. So 1605-2021. So the watch is uh, just a little over a couple of years old. And uh, yeah, it's got a five-year warranty on the watch, so it still has warranty too. So that's always a good thing. And uh, here, let's open this case up. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a coffin before for watches. This is this is it. This is what almost all watches come in, uh, these uh, uh, containers. And then they put them into the proper uh, boxes or presentation box, whatever you want to call it. So we've got a couple extra links there. That's always a good thing. And here's the watch. Let's get that out. I'm going to, again, move this out of the way. And... Let's see what my first impressions are. You know what? This thing is awesome. It's, it's really nice. Again, this is a 36 millimeter. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I've been kind of cavitating or leaning towards smaller watches these days. Maybe it's my old age kicking in. I don't know, but uh, this seems to be a, a nice size for me. The 36 to 38. Uh, oh, here's my Black Bay here. Uh, this is the 58, of course. And uh, I love this watch. This watch is going nowhere. If you guys are thinking about picking up a Black Bay 58, uh, now's a great time. I don't think you're going to get them any cheaper than what they are now. 
Uh, I've seen them go for as low as three thousand Canadian dollars, which is that's a giveaway price for this, uh, in my opinion, anyway. And I'm just going to pop that off wrist, and I'll just place that here, and uh, we'll take a little bit closer look at this watch. So there you go. You can see it's very reminiscent of the Tudor Black Bay 36, and which I had. Uh, mine was a black dial. And uh, you can see the side profile of the case is a little bit different. And um, if I could just get my calipers to measure the case, uh, just give me a sec, guys. I've got my trusty assistant to bring my calipers here. And uh, you can see it's, it's a really nice looking watch. The profile is a little bit different uh than the the black bay 36 or for the rolex date just but still a very attractive looking watch so let's check out the thickness of the watch just let me make sure that this is zeroed out yep <clears throat> so the thickness of the watch comes in at 10 uh yeah 10 millimeters i'll do that again for you guys okay so it comes in at 10 millimeters the lug to lug comes in at uh, and I don't know what the Black Bay 36 is. So it's a, a very compact 42.9, call it 43. And then the case diameter shouldn't be measuring about 36. And it does. Okay, so 36. You can see that there. So nice compact dimensions. And I'll just hold it up against the Black Bay 58 here so you can see the, the size difference. So I would say it's a considerable difference. And uh, as, as luck had it too, I was at the local AD here in North Vancouver and uh, I went to try out a couple of the Rolexes, uh, the Datejust, the one that I like, and they had them there uh, as display models only, you couldn't purchase them, but I tried the 36 and the 41 and yeah, just kind of, I was on the fence and they both look good, but I, I still think the classic 36 is the way to go. In, the, in this type of watch now ideally i wish this had an oyster bracelet i'm going to look into changing that possibly uh, if i can source one out and definitely for those of you that know i like my cyclopses and this will definitely be getting a cyclops and uh the nice thing about putting the cyclops on guys is you can as easy as it is to put on it's just as easy to take off and, and look at that the watch is actually my size and no need to size it and I believe these are screw-in links. And yes, they most certainly are. Okay. And this watch is in really nice shape. There's, you know, typical uh, hairline scratches on the bracelet and that. If I want, I can remove them very easily. But I'm going to leave it for now. But let's just, I'm going to show you what this watch looks like with the Cyclops. And you guys, please in your comments tell me. If you think yay or nay to the Cyclops. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky here. Because I'm not gluing the, the Cyclops on. So uh, there's there that's what the Cyclops looks like before I install it. Okay. And there's a special kind of glue that you got to use. Um, kind of like a crazy glue. But a little bit slower set. So you have a chance to kind of move it around and manipulate it. So if you're a little bit off, you can correct it. So I'm just going to place that there. And I'm just going to move the camera. So if it wobbles a bit, sorry about that. But this is pretty much the only way you guys are going to be able to get a halfway decent look. And I'm just going to zoom in a bit more so you can see that. And let me just bring the watch up a bit. And here it is. Oh, there it is there. So that's what it's going to look like. With the Cyclops. I wish I could tilt it more for you guys without the Cyclops moving. But you get the idea. And uh, I think it's going to look really good with the Cyclops myself. It's just going to look that much more like a date just. So there you have it. But uh, I'll, I'll do another video once the I've got the Cyclops in place. <laughs> but I know some of you guys don't like dates. And you even more so hate Cyclopses. Um, but... I kind of like it. Now, I haven't had a chance to check the lift angle on this, but I'm going to throw it on the time grapher anyways. So it's not going to give you an accurate, super accurate reading, but uh, it's better than nothing. Plus, I think it might be the same as the Black... I should be... Well, I don't know. The Black Bay 58 is using in-house. 
this is using an ETA movement. So I'm just going to zoom back out and let's get back on to the time grapher here. So we're just going to throw this on the time grapher. I think this is set at 52. And uh, you know what, before I put it on the time grapher, just let me give this a little bit of a wind. So, okay. So just wind it up a bit. Just give me a sec, guys. Sorry about that. But um, this is a great looking watch. Uh, I'm, who knows? I may decide to just abandon ship on the Datejust, which is a hell of a lot more money than this. Okay. So there we go. I've got it wound up. The crown is screwed back in. It's on auto detect. And let's see what kind of numbers this sucker is going to put up. Okay, so it's running a little bit fast at the moment at plus 12. Just give it a minute to settle in. Okay, well, okay, it's already starting to settle in at minus 6. The amplitude's decent at 274. And you can see it's 28,800 beats per hour. I've got the lift angle set at 52. I'm not 100% I'm not sure if that's correct or not, but it should be pretty close. All right, so you can see here... It's a solid movement. This watch has got no issues. We're at minus 3, 283 degrees of amplitude, strong beat, and no beat air. Okay, so we're looking really good here, guys. So no disappointments there. I'm just going to turn the sound off for this because it is kind of annoying. <clears throat> so... Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think of the Glamour Date. Again, it's probably a model that most of you never even heard of. And it was just by fluke that, that I ran into this. And if you ask me, um, I would take this over the Black Bay 36 simply because it's got the date. And you know what? I just, I like the way the indices are here. It's much more Rolexy. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. You can see it's much more Rolexy. The um, the Black Bay 36, if you remember, has got dots at the hour markers instead of the uh, stick indices. And I like the these hands as well. These are the non snowflake. You can see that's kind of a Tudor trademark with the snowflake. Now, don't get me wrong. I like it. Uh, I think it looks good. But for a dress watch, this um, seems a lot more classy. I would say the Tudor. Um, Black Bay 36 is uh, more of a sporty and casual watch than this is. This is a little bit more of a dressy piece. Again, I'm going to throw this on my 7-inch wrist so you can have a, a good idea on what a 36-millimeter watch looks like. So there you go. Um, for me, my personal taste, uh, I really like this look. Um, yeah, I think it's just fantastic. I'll do a loom shot for you guys too. I've got my magic loom maker here. I'm just gonna kill the lights. Hang on a sec. And okay, we'll get that off. And let's see what the loom is like on this thing here. I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be very good. It is a Tudor. Granted, this is not a dive watch, but oh yeah, you got plenty of loom. I'm just gonna see. Let me just <laughs> cover this. I should have just turned that sucker right off. Okay, so I don't know why it's not focusing on the on the loom, but it's it's not happy here. Um, okay, let me zoom back out. Maybe that's gonna do it. Anyway, for whatever reason, I I can't get that to focus great, but it's got good loom. Uh, but you can see the only things that are loomed on it are the hands of the of the watch, the hour and minute hands. But uh, yeah. I'm very happy with this purchase. I think if you can pick one of these up at the right price, it's definitely a buy. I would recommend it at, uh, honestly, under 2000 Canadian, uh, this is a buy all day long. And like I said, it gives the, the Black B uh, uh, 36 a good run for its money for sure. I don't know what's happened to my camera here, guys. Oh, there we go. Now it decides to focus. But I really like this watch. And uh, just another option for you guys out there. If you don't want to be spending Rolex money, but you want something that's pretty close to a Rolex, 
And this is definitely, you could consider this as a, a very close cousin, because of course, you know that Tudor, Tudor is owned by Rolex. So again, I would really like your guys' opinions on this. What did you think? Should I put a Cyclops on it? Should I put an Oyster Bracelet on it? Just leave it as is. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already done so too, please take the time to like and subscribe. It just encourages me to continue on making these videos for you guys. And trust me on this, I'm not making a red cent out of uh, doing these videos. I do it out of the love of the hobby. And, uh, you know, at least you know my reviews. They're very honest. I've got nothing to gain by giving you a bunch of BS. So, yes, the Tudor Glamour 36 millimeter also comes in 41. It comes in different uh, two-tone and stuff like that too. Stay away from the two-tones in that, trust me. You want the one with the all-steel bezel. I've seen some too. It looks like they got like a white insert or something in here. It just looks wrong. You want the all-stainless steel one. And this one, like I said, has got the silver dial. So that's it. That's a wrap. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode of the Canadian Watch Monkey. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a good night.